tutorial I will show you how to make a, um, a Central America style uh, looking necklace. Um, so to start with you will need a pattern that would be reminiscent in a way of um, Central America native rugs and ceramics and also as a general idea um, all kinds of jewelry and stuff from that area have a certain earthy and terracotta flavor so to start with I made a, a Skinner blend that has these beautiful sun reminiscing earth colors and then I will make a cane, a very simple cane, in order to make a pattern. For this I've chosen several, I've chosen, I made several mixes of colors that are a little bit softer than um, a regular, except for the yellow, yellow I just left it the way it was and white of course um, but the rest I made them in a little bit softer hues so in order to do that cane uh, I will go in a triangle pattern alternating various colors so let's start I have to warn you about that uh, I normally have some vision problems and um, when I work, I normally just take off my glasses and bring everything I'm working on right under my nose. So I might not be very precise because I cannot do that right now. And I cannot use a magnifying glass either because it would get in the way of the camera. So in order to make sure that I get the more precise triangles, I am going, I just made these little rectangular pieces and I am going to cut them from the top vertically and it is very possible that during the video I will have to pause the video because it's a very stormy day so my clay might get a little too soft to do caning so if that would be the case I would have to pause the video put the polymer clay in the freezer for 10-15 minutes and then restart the whole deal. So let's start. I will probably just fast forward all this thing so I'm not going to talk anymore until I will have all of these cut. Okay, <clears throat> so I've got everything. Now I'm going to try and make a nice color combination. So there will be practically two rows of triangles uh, alternating as direction. So I'll have to kind of <clears throat> combine the color colors nicely. So, <clears throat> there we are. Now, each of them has to be wrapped. This is even more interesting, huh? So, I will try and get a color that, it's like a puzzle. I will try and get a color that does not match any of these surrounding ones, but would still be a good fit for the other one. So I will just pause the video and come back when the cane is done. Okay, so this is done. I had to stop it because it usually takes about half an hour for me to uh, mix and match all this. So this is the cane that now I will have to reduce. 
I have to warn you that I am not very good at caning because I have some uh, nerve damage in my hand. So it takes a great deal of work. But anyway, this needs to be reduced at about a quarter of its size now. So I guess I will pause the video again so you don't have to wait until I manage to do this. Okay, so I have reduced the cane. I hope you can see how it looks like waiting for the camera to refocus. So I'm going to put it aside and let it rest. It's not very warm, fortunately. Now comes a very important part. Um, in order to be able to do the designs properly, you need to have your shapes uh, because otherwise they might not fit and that would not be nice. So I'm going to take my cutters and I'm going to outline it. I'm sorry, I forgot that probably a pencil will not leave a lot of traces on a wax paper. So, slightly trace the outline of the cutter in several positions actually. I should have enough clay to make about, I don't know, five, maybe six. Let's go see. Okay. Now, I'm going to make a small, and here, And then one here. And then probably a line here. Just to make as many combinations because of what will happen, what I will be doing will be to actually cut um, the beads from the Skinner blend and then the cane will go on a base layer and after the cane goes on the base layer it will um, I will cut shapes from the base, from the cane too, and then just combine the Skinner blend and the shapes. Okay, this should work good. Okay, now I'll go ahead and cut my And you want to get, okay, let's wait for the camera to refocus. Okay, 
and you want to get as many combinations of the uh, Skinner blend as possible. So don't get just a dark color or just the light. You want to combine as much as possible. So it's a good idea to also use a piece of cling wrap so you get nice and rounded edges. Just make sure that there is no wrinkling in the cling wrap. And that's the hardest part to do. And you don't have to cut all the way because you can come after that and cut again with the cutter without the cling wrap. I'm going to get one. Here. Get a little bit of the darker one, but still get some light. And another one here. That one will get even darker. So probably it will be six. I might just stop at five, so it will be one pretty much acting like a focal bead. Okay. So this is out of the way, so what I will be doing will be to actually cut these all the way. And, and the other thing that I need to do is to actually do arranging the cane on a base of clay. So, of course, you need to make sure that you cut perfectly straight. So I will be first cutting and then I will arrange them. And again, I will stop the video so you don't have to wait with me while I'm doing all this. But and this is the idea and you want to do it to put them together like this because of the black. So I will be stopping now and then start again once I'm done with this. Okay, so all is done. I have made a piece of the cane on um, a base layer of polymer clay. And I have also put my Skinner blend pieces on uh, backing because I want them to be approximately equal um, or as close as possible because this one being on a base, this one needs to be kind of on a base too. So even if there will be a little bit of a difference, I don't want it to be that big of a difference. Okay, now... I will start cutting my 
uh, shapes out of the caning part, cane part. So I see that here I have a little circle. And I don't have to worry about the edges on this one because it's going to come inside the other one. So I'm going to find a nice position. So I will have about this much of it going inside. And then I have a little square here. So I will be doing the square, square two and it's about half of it that's going to show up. So I'm going to try and get as much of the cane part as possible. is this then I have this part that's actually this one that's actually part of a full one so what I'm going to do I'm going to actually cut a whole uh, shape because as you see this one and this one they are kind of the same i mean they will create almost a full one together so i will be cutting a hole and i don't want to go straight i want to go a little bit on the side on a diagonal And then my third one is, my fourth one is plainly a line. So I'm going to just go again in a diagonal. This much. So I'm going to go like this. And then remember, I said it's very important that you draw ahead of time. Okay, now, why I use parchment paper even if it is so messed up, you probably already figured out why, because it is see-through, let me find the exact position of this. No, I don't want this one. I want the circle to go in where there is no Skinner blend effect. The important part is this line to be lined up with the pendant.
think, and I want one to be. <coughs> I want the inclusions. <coughs> Excuse me. To not interfere too much with the Skinner blend effect. So. And now I can actually start putting them together because that very last one has to come uh, together with This comes from not seeing very well what I'm doing. Make sure that you get them together properly. 
and don't get surprises. Of course, I will put a, another back on them, but that will be after I do the first bake. Now I had the this one. I'm going to pretty much line it up. And then I have to do the same thing about this one, right? I'm trying to preserve it. Too. Uh, it's very important to get them to be about the same height. Very, very important. And the edges can be arranged, but the uh, height is important. I promise I will get the hang of working with the camera on. My only issue is with my eyesight. can be different. And a little square. And then that needs to go on a backing too.
actually this kind of looks pretty like this I might make some like this it looks fairly pretty some room and while these will be baking I will show you something else what can be done with all these remnants so for now this is what we have looks pretty nice huh um, I will be going ahead and um, making sure that the edges are okay I'm not going to keep you on hold on this and then uh, bake these and then I'll be back to show you how to do the back on it and then on ahead on finishing the whole necklace uh, and by the way, I just got my polyfast, so it will be an excellent um, occasion to test it.
So, see you in a little bit. Okay, so time to do the back of these pieces. I have chosen green because there is some green in this and uh, I think it would match pretty nicely. I ran a little bit, not very deep, of a texture sheet. So now I'm going to do the back of it so I can um, prepare it to be set in a necklace. And I have three, two of them in the oven because they don't all fit in the on the little vase that I've been baking them on, so they get a little bit more dimension, better than being flat. So, of course, because I am using baked clay and fresh clay. I need to use a little bit of liquid and I'm using Sculpey usually. I keep my Fimo for whenever I need to actually use transparent like for eyes and things. Make sure that... <clears throat> so yeah, I do want to I always am very careful about the back of my pieces. I'm a little bit of a OCD person. Make sure that there is no um, air left in between here. Fortunately, I couldn't put back the latex fingers because it started strangling my fingers. So I normally have very thin fingers, but sometimes because of my medical issues, this one can get swollen. And wearing something tight definitely doesn't solve the issue. It doesn't help at all. Okay. I'm going to just do a fairly buff cut. I'm going to try and get this close enough to my face, but at the same time keep it under the camera. So again, I'm doing a fairly rough cut just to get the excess off. And now I can go more
Okay, and to make it a little bit even more <clears throat> and this is my favorite edging tool, it's a paintbrush just has a beautiful handle Oh, get sanded. <clears throat> oh, you know what? Let me just finish this one so you don't have to be on here for the whole duration. And then once I finish all of them, I can start doing the necklace itself. always putting when I have open uh, rings I will put the little opening in here to make sure that it won't get open by mistake Check the symmetry to make sure that both sides look the same. So, looks pretty good. And I want to add a little bit of texture to these two little. So, I'm going to just use this. Okay, so once this is baked, I'm going to sand them and then we can start making a necklace. I shall be right back. <clears throat> 